All right, wearing this jumper was a terrible idea. This is my dazzle camouflage, everyone. Hopefully it doesn't give you all a seizure. Hello, interwebs. Welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a MacBook Air here. This is a uh, A2337, so uh, Apple Silicon, and uh, it does work. It's just mega beaten up, so um, I've got a load of screws at the bottom because I've been doing checking with this one before I did any work on it. But um, uh, something... I don't know if it got punched or someone stepped on it while it was on the floor open. I don't know. But either way, as you can see, it's extremely not straight. Um, the screen is broken. The keyboard is bent. And when it came in, you can see the back there, how out of shape that is. Um, and uh, when it came in as well, the um, I took the back cover off just to find out if the motherboard had just been snapped in half. And it hadn't, but it was very, very flexed. So I took out these two screws at this end here just so the motherboard could pop up slightly. And after doing that, um, I plugged in a different laptop screen and found that and found that it would actually start and run. Um, so the laptop is completely fine. It just needs rebuilding. And uh, after looking around, I looked up the cost of a new chassis and keyboard and a new screen and found that it was economic to do that. So basically what we're going to do today is just take this apart, put it into a new case with a new screen, and essentially just rebuild it. So pretty straightforward job, really. But um, I think um, I, the, the moral of this video will just be some disassembly with these um, uh, Apple Silicon MacBook Airs because the battery and the speakers will be a bit of a mission. Um, but uh, also just showing that you can have something that looks really, really beaten up and without breaking the bank, it is possible to actually restore it to something that will be considered um, fully refurbished. So yeah, this laptop should look brand new when we're finished. That's the plan. So let's get into it. I'm going to go and get my spare parts and then we'll start taking this thing apart. So let's get started with the disassembly on this one. I've already got the battery disconnected in this laptop and um, I've already taken a, quite a few bits and pieces out where I removed the screen for testing. But I'll show you how to get that off as well just for posterity. So let me just quickly arrange this roughly into position. That'll do. And let's find the zoom controls. So the first thing you need to do, again, battery disconnect. Then there's a little cover over here um, keeping the Wi-Fi antenna connectors in place. We remove that and we remove the little cover here so we can disconnect the display connector. And then the next thing we need to do is there are four screws holding in the Wi-Fi antenna and then another four holding the T-Con board in place. That's this little circuit board for the display. So take all of those out. And then with the display disconnected, the T-Con board now will kind of just float in place with the ribbons going into the display. Um, to get the Wi-Fi antenna out, it's still being held down. It has a, it kind of clips into the top of the chassis. It's difficult to explain, but it is just held in there just by a pinch fit. So grab a screwdriver and basically just pry it up until it pops out. And um, if you're not replacing the display, then be extremely careful that when you pry it upwards, you don't rip the T-Con board ribbons. However, because we're replacing our display, we don't really care. So that guy's going to come out, and then you can thread that out like so, and the Wi-Fi antenna comes off. That leaves you with just this empty bit, and then we've got uh, six screws, three on each um, hinge, in order to release the display. So I'll take that off while I'm here as well. I've already taken most of them out. What I do at this point is just open the laptop fully and just hang it off the end of the bench like so. So the screen is pointing down toward my waist. And that means that I can lay the laptop flat on the bench where it's nice and stable and in control. And I can also just support the, t the display with my, with my legs. And that way when I take out these last two screws, it's not gonna fall off of the laptop in an unexpected way and then we can just lift that out like so. So that's our busted display. Um, so this one, I'm not seeing any visible cracks 
on the actual panel itself. However, the uh, the bottom part has been bent in severely. There's cracks along here, and I already know that this display doesn't work because it wasn't giving a picture when the laptop came in. So um, I actually have a spare display that has cracks on it but does still give a picture, and that makes for a very good tester display because uh, it means that I can plug that one in and just see if I'm getting a picture from the laptop as a confidence test. So we've now got just the base of the laptop and um, we're going to want to take pretty much everything off of this. So we'll be taking the logic board, we'll be taking pr um, probably these two sub boards, so the USB ports on the, on the left and the audio board I guess you call that on the right. Um, we want the speakers, we want the battery and we want the trackpad. So the speakers and battery are the awkward part because these are taped down with lots of double-sided tape that is really tough. It is stretch release tape, so it has these pull tabs on it. I'll just peel that up. So it has these pull tabs on it that you're supposed to just pull loose. However, every time I've removed these so far, they've snapped on me. And I've had to go in there with prying tools and, um, and pallet knives and stuff and just cut it all out and it's been horrible. So, fingers crossed, maybe this will be the one. Okay, so next I'm going to take out the logic board. So we'll remove the trackpad connection by taking off these screws here. We're down to um, T3 here, by the way. Pretty much the three screwdrivers you need for this laptop are um, T8, yeah, T8 for big hinge screws, T5 for the larger screws, and T3 for the small ones. And that will get you through pretty much everything in the laptop, I think. So have those on hand. That guy's just going to pop off. There we go. And I'm just going to very gently peel this back. Be very careful when you're peeling this off of the battery. Um, these things can be very tough, but it's like sellotape. The moment you get it at the wrong angle, it'll just tear in half. It's very strange. So I'm just going to carefully peel that back. There we go. It's about as far as we need to go, I think just so it's off of the battery is what I care about there. And I'll just tuck that in there just so it's not in my way. And there is a speaker connection there. And I think this little guy down here is uh, microphones or something like that. And then over here, we've got the Type-C ports, again with a little cover plate on them, just to make sure that the connector can't pop out. Pop that guy off. And we'll take this out in a moment, but we'll get the board out first. Right. I think that's all of our cables removed from the board, so I should just be able to take out these board screws and this will come out now. Oh, that doesn't feel very good. Something's wrong with that screw. I think the standoff is turning, but also not coming out. All right, are we free? Something's holding on. Oh yeah, okay, right. So we've still got the audio board connected at this end. So I've got to get that guy off. This is why when you're um, uh, when you're taking a laptop apart, the moment when you think the board is free, just gently lift. Never just go Hoo with it because you think you've got it. Just gently lift and see if it wants to go, and just, just in case there's something you've missed. Right, we've got one there. Okay, there's our logic board out. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, so other things of note down here, the other speaker connection also goes to this board. And also, this is where our um, Touch ID sensor connects to. And uh, the Touch ID sensor is really important because it is key, it is serial encoded to this logic board. Um, so it's very, very important that we don't break this. 
because uh, we don't get another one. We can't just buy another one. So very gonna gonna very gently just ease that off of its little glue spot. Right, and disconnecting. Can I get that speaker cable out? Yes, I can. Just pop that guy out, and then we can unscrew this board as well. Right. While I'm over here, I may as well take out the touch sense, touch ID sensor. So that's got six screws on the back of it. It's a fairly similar setup on the MacBook Pro as well. And it's also why when you come to order a, if you order a new chassis to replace the keyboard or whatever, um, you'll find that there, there's a hole where the power button should be. And that's because um, the Touch ID sensor should follow the logic board around, not the chassis. Right, so now those screws are out, I can just gently push that through. Oop, there we go. And there's our Touch ID sensor. I'm not sure if I'm going to need any of this um, metal work here yet. We'll have a look um, at my replacement chassis in a minute and just see how much that actually has. In fact, I'll do that now just so I know how much of this I actually need to remove. Um, if I'm very lucky, I well, I'll probably need to take the battery out, but yeah, we'll see. All right, here's my replacement one, and yeah, it's got some of the bracket work on, but it needs uh, it needs ports and uh, yeah, it needs more or less everything. So let's keep taking bits out. Uh, so I do want the USB ports. So those two screws come out and that allows this guy to come out and we end up with just the inner the inner tangs of the of the type C ports. The actual outer section is just the chassis, which is actually a really good design that I wish more laptops would do because it's the outer section that always breaks. Um, so we don't need to worry about those two um, there's two sort of just metal bits there. I'm not sure if those are spring tensioners. I think they might be, but either way, they don't need to come out. So we've got what we need. So now we just need the speakers, the battery, and the trackpad. So I'm going to take out the trackpad because that then we can get rid of the cable. So also just because I forgot about it. Yeah, the logic board's a bit bent, but I think it'll be okay. It's very, very tempting to try and bend that into shape, but that's also a terrible, terrible idea. Once we put it into a straight chassis, it will be held straight, so... But we're not going to run the risk of damaging the bottom of um, BGA um, chips and stuff like that. Right, so uh, I just flicked up that locking bar and disconnected the trackpad from this um, section here. And... Also, oh yeah, then the keyboard and I think that's the keyboard backlight. Those ribbons stay there and this board is going to stay with the chassis because it's kind of glued down. And most of the time, it's, this is probably, you could probably just slice that off and remove it. But people don't seem to do that when they're replacing these chassis. So now we can remove the trackpad and there's eight screws, two in each corner. And then that should drop out. And when the trackpad does drop out, there's a little sort of spacer plate on each corner. So just make sure that um, when you're when you actually when we actually come to lift it out, you need to just watch out that that doesn't all just immediately fall off of your desk. I don't know how important those spacer plates are, but I've not tried fitting the trackpad without them. I have a suspicion that they probably just make it sit nice and straight and avoid other minor issues and such. Right, is that enough? Not yet. I think these two at the top need to come out as well in that case. Ah, there it is. Under the central one under the cable. There we go. And we'll just feed that wire through. There we go. So there's our trackpad and you can see those little spacer plates there. 
These guys aren't attached in any way, so they will just fall off if I turn the trackpad upside down. Um, now, this would probably be a good time to potentially clean the trackpad. This one looks all right, actually, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, but if the if the laptop was really dirty, um, you'd probably find there's a lot of grime just down the sides around the edges of the trackpad, and you'd want to just wipe that down with just um, um, just uh, a cloth that has some a cloth that you've moistened with glass cleaner or something like that. Um, even maybe just a damp cloth will do, but I would try and use glass cleaner or something that evaporates quickly. Um, rubbing alcohol kind of works, but rubbing alcohol is actually really bad at cleaning things, so it wouldn't be my first choice. But any kind of um, yeah, any kind of cleaning agent, just run it around the edges just to wipe away any grime and sweat and other nastiness that's gone down the sides of the trackpad, because that'll cause false input if it gets bad enough. So put that to one side. Okay, uh, next up is speakers. So this is the bit where it all goes horribly wrong. Oh, there's another washer there for the center screw. You can see how easily these things can just fall out and get lost. All right. Now, the theory is, if I peel back this tab and pull on it, it should pull the tape out. So I'm going to start pulling. And we're not going to do one long stretch. I'm going to try and keep grabbing the bottom of the tape. No, just straight away. Every time. I don't know how. Mm, I've seen stretch release tabs like this work properly. However, just on these MacBooks, never. I've never seen. They have always just immediately snap like that. Right, so this kind of sucks because now we've got to pry against all of the double-sided tape. Um, so in order to deal with this now, I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to squirt, squirt some isopropyl alcohol down the sides of this speaker. Only as far as about here, because once we get up to here, there is the actual speaker driver itself. And I don't want to get alcohol onto the speaker driver. I don't think it will damage it, but I'm not going to put that to the test. Um, because it may damage it. All right, now I'm going to grab my plastic palette knife and just start prying underneath there. I'm just try and lift this guy away. Okay, I'll wedge that in there. Take another prying tool. There we go. So you can see where the alcohol got wet here, but we didn't go near the actual driver. See, the rest of this now, if I grab that and pull on it, as you can see, it stretches and releases. That's what it's supposed to do. But I don't know, the tabs just, because the tabs are at an angle and they come up at a 90 degree angle and stuff, they just don't seem to function properly. Maybe there's a really good knack to stopping that from happening. We'll see if I have any better luck on the other side. All right, second time's the charm. I'm going to try pulling sideways a little bit so I'm not against the metal and plastic. See if that does anything for me. Oh, that looks like that's working, actually. There you go, now it's coming out. Oh, it's beautiful. There we go. That's how it's supposed to go. We figured it out, everyone. We did it. We did it, Reddit. Well, completely unintentionally, I've shown you the two methods of dealing with that. Um, that's how you that's how you avoid them snapping. Don't go out directly, come out sideways. However, if they do snap, you have now also seen how to uh how to get it out with brute force and ignorance. All right. Good. So, that's our speakers out. Now, um having taken the speakers out, we've now revealed um some screws that are holding the battery down. One on each side. And 
and the battery has more stretch release um, strips on it. And these guys, I think these guys will come straight off. So, yeah, there we go. That's going nicely. It's very satisfying when stretch release tape actually works properly. You can buy replacement lengths of this stuff. However, I personally don't glue the battery in again because it has screws holding it in. And these are pretty tight fitting laptops. By the time you've got the screw holding the battery in, then the speakers on top of that, then everything else on and the back on top of there, the battery isn't going to fall out. Um, so I actually prefer to not glue them back in because it just makes the next person's job, who at some point in the lifetime of the laptop will probably be replacing the battery, it just makes their life harder. It's kind of ludicrous to glue in a battery in the first place, in my opinion. So I'm like, you know what would be cool is if we didn't glue the battery down? As I say, it's not like it's going to fall out. All right, so with those stretch release tabs removed, the battery now just lifts out. There we go. Ignore that splash of wet, that's just where the alcohol I put on that side is just um, wicked under the battery. You can see how liquid moves in a laptop this way, but this will just evaporate. It's, uh, it's harmless. So we're done with this now. Um, so yeah, we've got a microphone array for that bit there. Um, and is there anything else I care about? It's a loose screw there. I'm not sure where that guy has come from. That might have been one of the logic board ones. I don't think we're going to need that. And we've already figured out that we don't need that because that is on our um, that's on our replacement um, chassis. So we're done with this bent chassis now. So here's my new one. Um, so this is a used one, but it's in. So far as I can tell, I would call that just mint condition. Um, I'm actually. Like, it's got a little bit of grubbiness on it that tells me that it's been used, but I can't actually see a mark. There we go. There's a tiny mark, just tiny ding there, which I'm not even sure is showing up on camera. But other than that, this one's in fantastic condition. And yeah, you can see where this has been used. Um, but yeah, this is in great condition. So um, so yeah, this was a good purchase. Second hand ones, they're not, I think they're about £100, you know, £90, £100, that kind of money for something like this. They don't cost the earth. And if you need to replace a keyboard, this is by far and away the best way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I believe it's possible to replace these keyboards, um, keyboard only, without replacing the chassis. But I, 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 yeah, I dread to think how much actual hassle it actually is, though. Certainly any butterfly style keyboards for Apple are a hard nope from me. So I think it's easier to just replace the chassis. So let's put in the two screws holding the battery in. And we're now just going to reassemble in the reverse that I took it apart. So let's keep going everyone. So for the trackpad, I've just put all of the screws in. Now we kind of want to try and hold it centralized. I've seen, I haven't got any, but I've seen they do exist some tiny little spaces you can get where you put one in each corner and it just perfectly gaps like the fraction of a millimeter gap around the trackpad while you, while you tighten it up. I need to get hold of some at some point because they look absolutely magic. I'm just going to do two of them up to just fing tip, tip of finger tightness. Straighten that again. I'm just doing this by eye basically. 
Okay. I'm going to go with that. I might tweak that a bit more later. I'll wait and just see where it's sitting after I've reassembled the rest of the laptop. That's good enough to put all the screws in though. The Touch ID sensor is also a game of making sure that it's centered correctly. And this one's got the added wild card that you need to make sure it's centered correctly and then also just make sure that it's actually uh, clicking nicely. Because I've had a mare of a time with these sometimes where just you tighten the screws up and the button just goes solid and doesn't click. Um, and just sometimes I've had to do a hell of a song and dance to get it to work properly. The other problem with the Touch ID sensor is that this guy's a pig to get to if the laptop isn't disassembled. The trackpad, I can correct that later if I have to, but not so with this guy, so it needs to be correct. Now the audio board can go back in. Uh, right, we can't put that on yet. That goes on later. Let's put our Type-C ports back in. And before I tighten those screws, I'll just connect something into the ports just to make sure they're centered nicely. I'll use my CMI Zapper chipmunk. There we go. Because it is possible to have those screws a little bit out of adjustment and then just suddenly find that one of the ports is unreasonably tight. Uh, good, right. I think we're ready for the logic board. So let's thread this guy in. I need to remove this screw, so I'm going to grab a pair of pliers. There we go. That's part of the old chassis, so we don't care about it. And now we'll just thread this guy into position. And this isn't sort of this isn't dropping into place in a very satisfying way, but that's just because it's bent. But I'm just looking carefully and I'm just checking that everything is aligned. And yeah, by the time when all those screws go in, everything is going to sit right. There's nothing that is sticking up in a place where it shouldn't. So I shall put screws in. Slight loose fit just to let the board center itself. Right, that's screwed in. I've just pushed the flex down onto the audio board at the other end, and we can now put that little cover plate on as well. Gets rid of more of these annoying tiny screws. And these little cover plate screws, I'm just going tip of the fingers tight with those, just so it feels like they're starting to bite, but it's extremely easy to just shear those off, so don't try and tighten them down too much. Obviously, I, it's hard to tell you exactly how much too tight is, but like I say, look for the bite point. And then connect our trackpad at both ends. Open that locking bar, slide it in, and then close the bar again. There we go. And I'll just use the remaining sticky just to stick that down as well. As tempting as it is to get the battery connected, just to get that connector to stay down, it's too early for that, so make sure you leave that until last. Okay, we're ready for a new display, so let's grab my new display. 
and we just need to very gently just peel off packaging on this. So I'm just going to gently press on the T-Con board while I just remove the tape holding in place. There we go. And now we can just slide out these little bits of foam packing. And I'm going to open the hinges to maximum, which makes it easiest to actually fit the screen onto the body of the laptop. So open those the whole way until they stop. And now let's just go to the back of the bench again. And just support the TCOM board just so it lays over the logic board. And just drop that guy into place. There we go. Now I'll get in a screw on each side to support the screen. And then we can close the laptop up and just start screwing everything into place. Just a loose fit. Just enough so I can just close the laptop. Right, and now I'm just going to use my fingers on the corners just to make sure that the screen is on straight and true. I can also look a look, look at the hinge lines just to see if it's centered and on straight. And again, then we can just tighten up those two screws we've put in. Looking good, looking good. Now our Wi-Fi antenna. We're almost there, everyone. It's close. So again, I'm going to thread the T-Con board through the Wi-Fi antenna. And then I can settle the Wi-Fi antenna down into the body of the laptop. And now here comes the awkward bit. I don't know if there's a good way of doing this, but I tend to just Move the T-Con board aside, and then I use one of my metal prime tools just to press down on this center bit, which is where it just, as I've mentioned at the start, there's a tang on the um, antenna that just pushes into a slot on the uh, chassis. So we just want to press that into place. This doesn't go in with any kind of satisfying click, as far as I'm concerned. So, oops, that was me slipping off of it. So I just give it a shove. Right, that's those guys screwed in. Now we can put the T-Con board into place. So just gently maneuver that and then put the screws in. I said earlier on that there were four screws for the T-Con board, but I lied. It's actually just the two because uh, the outer two are chassis screws. My display connector doesn't want to go on properly, so I'm just going to back out the T-Con screws just so the board can wobble about a little bit. And that just helps locate the connector. That on? Yep, it's good enough. And now we can click down the Wi-Fi antenna screws, put the cover on top of that, and then we can connect up just any other small bits that are hanging off. So microphone, other speaker, and then I think, yeah, we're basically done and we can connect the battery back up as well. Right, how bent is this back cover? Well, it's got a little bit of a lip on it, but I'm going to leave that alone. I could try and start bending that, but bending metal is a bit sketchy, and I don't think that's going to sit higher than the feet will. So I'm going to leave that alone and just put it in as is. Just two screws in for now. Right, moment of truth. 
If the battery has charge in it, it may turn on. However, usually you'll need to connect a charger to trigger the board, the laptop to wake up. That looks like the case here, so let me just plug in a charger. Ah, that sounded promising. And there's our Apple logo. And that is booting up. Right, so I'll just wait for a full screen picture before I commit to taking the peel off the screen and everything, just to make sure there's no defects on it or anything like that. Alright, and I see no issues with the screen, so I'll very gently peel this away. And I'm just going to keep one hand on the glass as I go. I don't know how effective this is, but a couple of times I've sort of, not fast peeled, but I've done a slow and prog progressive, I've just gone off the screen, and the screen has just suddenly washed out. And like, not gone completely white, but gone very evidently off colour. Um, which I can only imagine was just static build up on, in the screen. Um, and it came good. After leaving it for like 5 or 10 minutes, it faded back down to sensible colours. But ever since then, I live in fear of uh, actually damaging a brand new display just by doing the peel too quickly. So, just be gentle. Right, and now I'll just wipe off the big old handprint that I put on the screen. The idea of putting my hand on the display there is I'm just trying to equalize the the static between at least me and the laptop and the thing. Hmm, it seems to work. Right, in the back, we don't need to be quite so careful here, but again, I'm going to keep one hand on here just so there's no um there's no potential difference building up between the plastic and the screen. All right, and there we go, everyone. That looks just fine. Brilliant. So the battery on this is stone flat, which is why I didn't want to turn on initially, so it needs a good charge. But the uh, the keyboard is working. No problems there. It's doing letters. I can select all. I can shift caps, and the brightness controls work. Those are the usual tests I do. There we go. Uh, and just for posterity's sake, I'll do a the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which has every letter in the alphabet in it. Huzzah! That's fine. Excellent. So that's us all finished, and we've taken a very beaten up looking laptop to looking exactly as it was when it came out the box. So that's a really good result, that. When this laptop came in and it was almost, you know, had a, that massive ding in it and wouldn't turn on and everything, you know, we were, I said to the customer, okay, we, we're just going to be trying to get the data off of this. Um, however, it actually wasn't nearly as bad as it looked. Lucky escape for the customer that there was no actual BGA damage on the logic board because that, that meant that data recovery was as simple as just plugging in another display to it. And recovering the laptop was just as simple as just replacing the bent metal work. So thanks for tuning in, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.